SIGGRAPH 92 JUST BROKE RECORDS THIS MORNING. WE HAD OVER 31,000 ATTENDEES. THIS IS THE OLYMPICS IN OUR AREA. FROM THE ATOM TO THE UNIVERSE, IT'S ALL HERE. CHICAGO, ILLINOIS. The International Computer Graphics Community gathers at the McCormick Place Convention Center for SeaGraph, their annual conference on the state of the art in tools, techniques, and applications. But one exhibit stands apart at this year's conference, Showcase, created by the pioneers in high performance computing and communications, or HPCC. Showcase provides a unique glimpse at science as it will likely be done in the 21st century. Represented in force at Showcase, the National Science Foundation Supercomputer Centers. We have an opportunity in an in a organized fashion for a week show to bring something like Showcase in which three dozen scientific projects from all over the country can now come through the network and appear to be in McCormick Place, even though the scientific instruments are in Minnesota, California, North Carolina. You walk into Showcase, hey, it's all here. And that's the magic of the network. Thanks to high-speed fiber optic links connecting McCormick Place to national computer networks, the showcase exhibits enable the audience to peer into phenomena across almost every scale. Like journeying across an atomic surface imaged in real time by a scanning, tunneling microscope, navigating through the motions of giant molecules, visualizing sound waves breaking up a kidney stone, or simulating a thunderstorm that could spawn a deadly tornado. Then from a vantage point high in space, peering down at the giant waves propagating from an earthquake beneath the Pacific Ocean, or traveling far beyond our planet to the beginnings of the cosmos itself. Simulated on remote supercomputers or created from data gathered by faraway instruments, these visualizations demonstrate the power of distributed computing, doing computation where the resources are and not necessarily on a single machine. In a few years, the network is the computer, and it doesn't matter where your supercomputer is, it doesn't matter where your data resources are, where, where your sensors, your scanners, or your satellite data. It can come from anywhere, it can be stored anywhere, but you can access it at your fingertips on your desktop. What we're going to do right now is to actually use the Cray YMP at NCSA down in the middle of Illinois. For example, researchers linked to a supercomputer at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications demonstrate how distributed computing techniques can be utilized to evolve a thunderstorm model and change the parameters in real time. Computation is not only essential for simulating reality, but also for measuring it and processing and visualizing the vast amounts of resulting data. By obtaining the output of instruments in real time, scientists will increasingly be able to control, even steer instruments from anywhere in the country and eventually the world. One example, a team from the San Diego Supercomputer Center and nearby research institutions created a prototype distributed computing environment to control an electron microscope in San Diego, where nearby supercomputer processes the resulting image data. Hello, Chicago. Chicago, are you there? It looks good here. Uh, can I go ahead and transfer? From a workstation request? in Chicago, a scientist okay. interacts over the network with a technician in San Diego, requesting that the sample be rotated or a yet tinier portion be probed in real time. Yes, we've got the image here. Looks very good. Then a 3D representation can be called up and animated. From the structures within a single nerve cell to the anatomy of the brain, distributed computing permits complex medical images to be explored remotely. Here, magnetic resonance images of the brain computed at the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center are displayed and manipulated locally on a low-cost workstation. The model of a human being, a scientist, sitting at a computer alone has to go away. We have to have collaborative efforts involving many scientists working with, with collections of computers. And we have to develop the technologies and the techniques and, and the sociology to go along with, with group activities. Linking together both instruments and researchers creates opportunities for scientific collaboration on a scale as never before. Without doubt, the need for such collaboration is growing in proportion to the complexity of the problems to be studied. But with growing torrents of data from supercomputers and instruments, how can scientists make sense of it all? 
New kinds of human and computer interfaces, such as virtual reality, are necessary to turn all the data into shared knowledge. For an exhibit that really caught the crowd's imagination, little could rival the cave. Here spectators could share the experience of total immersion in a virtual environment, complete with sound and 3D images. Virtual reality is a mode of scientific visualization. It's something that lets you get inside of the data. Now, most computer screens, you're outside looking in. In this, you're inside looking out. In the cave, you can really have an expert navigator, like a guide in the jungle, and somebody who's the research scientist who knows what to look for in the data. They don't have to be the same person. But beyond the excitement of virtual reality are its serious scientific applications. Designing molecules, predicting the weather, mapping the galaxies in the cosmos, these are but some of the grand challenges of science and society. There are the, the grand challenges of science, the grand challenges of our society. If, if we're to remain competitive in the, uh, the remainder of the 20th century and on into the 21st century, and in fact to improve our competitive position, we will have to learn how to use the most advanced technologies. <laughs>